Hey, happy Christmas day guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to y'all. Today's episode is going to be called Do Over because we're going to take, remember the white owl box I've been working on that messed up and busted out on me regardless of how many times I reinforce it. We're going to be putting a new box on the same neck. Now, uh, I think most of us that have built any cigar box guitars know that there's going to be some do-overs every once in a while. In fact, I had a couple do-overs in the past, one of them with the Mr. Airplane Man guitar. Um, I had an issue with lineup and stuff like that and that kind. So I ended up with this being a wall hanger. Um, you've seen uh, this guitar on the internet with Margaret playing it. I'm going to give you a link to it right up there right about now. Um, I did make Margaret another call, guitar called the Sky Zephyr guitar. Um, let's talk a little bit slower because I'm going to give you another I card uh, to that build called the Sky Zephyr guitar. There's another I popping up there right about now, but there's Margaret with that guitar. Now, I got this under the Christmas tree this week. Margaret recorded this album, every song on it played with the Sky Zephyr guitar, live at the St. Charles River Museum of Industry. A great album. I think Barnes and Nobles carries it. Barnes and Noble. I will give you a link below. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like. There's enough of you to give me a dislike out there, but I still keep getting that one. I really appreciate that one dislike because it creates the kind of controversy that's going to make me rich. That's Margaret playing in the background on this album. Another shout out I've got is, oh, you know what's in here? Parts from MGB Guitars. Got a whole box of them under the Christmas tree. And, uh, Hey, shout out to you, Michael Breedlove. You've been good to me all year. Now, let's get to the bench and figure out how we're going to put a new box on an old guitar. All right, guys. First thing we're going to do is we're going to strip these parts off of here. So I'll pull the floating bridge off. We're going to reuse that. We'll take these knobs off of here like so. These pots are going to be junk. Um, but this pickup here the artist gave to me. Now you always want to invest in a set of these nut drivers because they come in real handy. You know that I like to use nylon insert nuts so they don't back off on the pickups and coils and stuff. Because there's nothing worse than something cutting loose before it has to. So I'm going to strip this off of here like so and catch up with you in a minute. Alright there we go. We'll get all the parts going in the box. I always got a box going on here. Um, by the way, um, these Toronto boxes are almost the exact same size as the Camacho boxes I really like to use. So, um, yeah, this one's going to Ridgecrest. You're going to find it on the telephone pole behind Reuben Lacey's church. So if you get up there and you can find this, you'll know you're in the right spot. And um, while we're here... Let me uh, if you see that you'll know I've been there so feel free to sign it or make your mark or whatever give us an X okay so in picking the replacement box I've got some colorful stuff here and this is Holly Springs uh, Mississippi themed here and so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Camacho 60 by 6 box. It's got orange sides. It'll kind of add to the color. Now, I'm going to flip this around so it opens up. The hinges will be towards the person playing. It'll be on top. But I'm going to flip this around and show you that I just got to take these screws out here. Got a little nut driver in this gadget right here. And that'll help me out pretty easily. When you're working with this, you don't want to strip everything out, so you just want to support it real good, like so. Imagine I'm right in front of the camera. But a couple of things I want to show you while I'm here. We're going to use sink drains um, for sound holes and to keep the top of the box on, or to close the lid. 
So the one thing I don't want to do is put my cut my sink drain holes like here too close to the edge because then I'll be drilling down into the edge of the box. I got too much going on here. So what I do is I take this little depth gauge and make sure that I get that measurement like that. So then I'll mark off the top of the box and make sure that I'm not going to um, be drilling too close to the edge. So I'll mark that off. Now, one of the things I do is I pull this off. I'll pull the sticker off. And this right here is done on our friend the belt sander. Now, I've been, you can see that this is white here. I've been grinding down a bone nut after I cut it on my other best friend, the jigsaw. And I got a present from my family I want to show you in an upcoming episode. I got a band saw, so now I'm really set up. But what I want to do before I start grinding anything here is I want to get this bone thing off here. Now, this is a, a, a sanding belt cleaner that you can get at Harbor Freight. It's made out of rubber or something. But anyway, you just turn this on and run it over it. Yeah, see, there you go. The belt is uh, very clean. I want to show you here. Again, I'm going to grind this off so I can mark it out and figure out where everything goes. But I'm going to take the sticker off the top, but I'm going to leave it on the side there, and I like that. So I'm just going to take this little surgical knife that I have, a little scalpel. I'm going to make a cut just right on the edge. I don't have to worry about marring up the top of the box at all and go down two edges of that sticker just like that. And then I'm going to take this little potty knife here and just kind of scrape the top of that sticker off. Bear with me. I just kind of want you to see how this looks. It retains a, enough of the sticker so you can tell what it was and, and keeps it junky looking enough. But it always reminds you that it actually was a cigar box. So you see there, I'm going to grind all this off, but that's still there. Okay, we're going to the belt center. I'm just going to take the top off. I'm going to leave the edges in this like it is. Remember, I don't glue the neck on anymore. I bolt. So this is fine the way it is. You'll be able to see that on the inside. But basically, I'm going to get this down to the wood. And that's just simply doing this on a belt sander enough to rough it down. And I'll show you because I'm going to put a graphic on here and I want it to stick. It will not stick to this lacquer. Right, there we go um, nice and smooth there's a little bit there but it doesn't matter the main thing is you'll notice I didn't grind down at the edges the edges are still nice and lacquered and will present well um, but this is gonna be enough to put the graphic on now I want to remember where my screws go I don't want to get this turned around so this will always be up towards the body of the guitar player right-handed guitar player so I'm laying this out my sound holes will be up here. My bridge will be here. So let's go back to the bench and lay everything out. Okay, I put a couple marks. I want to know that this is uh, towards the headstock. Sound holes are in this area. This is down. This is up. And the bridge is going to go back in here somewhere. So remember how I measured the edge of the box and how thick it was or the thickness of the box on the side. I'm going to go around and make a couple marks here and there like so on this box and that'll tell me I can take a square and draw a line all the way around and that way I won't be again having a conflict with where the sound holes and all my potentiometer mounts and everything so I'm just going along here like so and lining this up. I can't even see the one I did there, so let's redo that one. There it is. Square this up like so. Boom. I know this is monotonous, but just kind of pay attention because everything I'm doing here 
I've made mistakes before that were costly. Nothing like putting a volume pot in and having it hitting against the side of the box and stuff. So now I've got all those marks around. I know what my clearances are when I'm mounting things here. And now I want to find the center of the box. These Camacho boxes are, I almost used the inches method there. They are 172 millimeters, which gives us about 87. Just for you, metricator, I'm going to put a mark right there. I'll put a mark right here. I'm going to refer to this mark, this 87 mark, a ton of times as I'm building it. So I want to make sure I know where the center of this box is for sure every time. So let's line that up. Boom. We're going to need to know where that is starting right about now. Let's get a couple of these hang things hung up and out of the way for a minute here without knocking down the whole setup. But the main thing I'm going to try to do here is not have to mess with this neck too much because it's done and it was ready to go. Um, but you can tell that these box sizes are different, which means the bridge and everything is going to line up in a different spot. Well, I really don't want it to. Remember this? 25 and a half scale yardstick we cut down. I want to remind you that you measure scale by coming to the back of the neck. So we let the zero be there. Um, the 12th fret is going to be at 12 and a quarter, and I've got that lined up here. It's 25 and a half. So we get this back in the camera range. Our bridge on this box is going to need to be right there. So I really don't want to cut this apart. So I'm going to line this up where the back of the box lines up where it drops in the tailpiece. So it'll drop right in there like that. I've got that middle mark. I know where the middle of this is. Am I in the camera? Oh yeah, I am. And so I can line this up here. But you see, there's going to be some to cut down here. So I line this up. Get this wire out of the way here. Now if I line this up here like so, where the back of that box is right where that drop down is, I'm going to make a mark about right, you can't see it, right there. See that mark right there? That is where I'm going to have to cut this top of this box out. This is actually going to sit like so, and this neck is going to be down to about here. And so I have to cut out to that line. So I'm going to grab my square here quick. Let's get the neck out of the way. We'll grab my square and go to that line right there. Now, remember this handy template we made that's mysteriously the same width as the neck. You see that? How handy is that? I can just lay this right here right now on the center. Make a mark there. Make a mark there. And then take my square and line that mark up there. And going to be old here. There. And now I can cut this out by drilling a little hole here, a little hole here, and taking it to a bandsaw or a scroll saw and, and cutting that out. Now, I don't want to cut this too big first. It's always easier to take material off if, if I need to, but you don't want to make this really wide. You want that neck to sit down in there just right and look clean, like so. Good. Okay, I wanted to show you a little trick here. I've cut the uh, inset for the neck that's going to come down into the top of the box. Um, and I still got to cut this. So I'm cutting a couple circles here. Now, I want you to notice on the back of this, if you just drill through this, it's going to blow all this out. So I've taken this bigger bit here. I always have two cordless drills. And I've made a hole there and a hole there. 
And now I've got a bot. I've got a small bit that I'm gonna use to go through the bottom of the box, and it's gonna blow out a little bit. See that? But now that I've drilled these down a little bit, I can take my big bit and set it right there, and do that. And see those holes are nice and clean. Little trick I learned the hard way. And I come back from this side and do this and we're good to go nice and clean. Okay, now that I've got those two holes cut in here, I can come back to the scroll saw and I can come in and cut into those holes and get that excess material out of the way. And then I will come down and straighten the edges up. See, there we go. Now I'll just flip this around and do the corners as I need to. You always want to remember, stay outside of the mark just a little bit because you can go in with a file and fix that up later, but cutting too much out is a deal killer. There we go. I can get the rest with a file. All right, we're back over here. And, ooh, look at that. Just a tad, I've got just a tad to take off right here. See where that's rough? I will sand that down and everything will fit just right. Now there's some things that you just best to do the hard way. Something I want to remind you of is you got a lacquer finish on here. So if I'm going from this way, it's more likely that that lacquer is going to shed off and get caught over here. So I'm going to work from the lacquer side in like so. You see that? Even though this is going to be on the inside of the box, I'm going to try and keep it pretty. And if I work at an angle like this, let's see, it should be dropping down in here. Ooh, look at that. Tad more. Just a tad, but there we go. So now the thing is, is where is my scale going to line up? So I put my scale up here on the nut. At the end of the nut, I'm going to hold it right there. And I'm going to make a mark right there. And guess what? That's where my floating bridge is going to be. So everything is going to line up. Now it's just a matter of getting the sound holes in and making sure that everything lines up good. Hey, remember... Um, I told you a little bit earlier about this depth gauge and going around the edges and making sure that it matched the thickness of the side of the box and knowing where that is. Well, here's an example. Um, I did an episode called Easy Open Box or something where I showed you how to use these RV sink drains. Uh, not only as sound holes, but as a way to keep the box open so you can open and close your box without... Um, having to unscrew anything with a thumb screw. So um, you'll notice that I have the mark here and here, and I don't want the sound hole that I'm going to drill to be cutting into the side or too close. So I'm going to take this, turn it upside down, and put it fairly close to the edge, about a millimeter off. I'm going to make a mark here so I know where I put this thing. And then with that mark in there, I'm going to set my all down in there. Once I have that, it really doesn't matter what happens to the sink drain. Now I'm going to take this and tap and do the same thing over here. Notice I've got this braced up over here underneath so I can pound on this. But once again, I just go close to the edge and close to the top about a millimeter off make a circle you got to kind of watch that you don't get this stuff too close to here so you get splits and stuff after time but again once that's there I just set my all there and I pop that one. now I've got not enough hands my trusty two pieces of wood here what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find that hole right there and I'm going to make sure that 
I draw a line this way going over where that hole is like so because if I was off a little bit with my awl when I go to drill holes that moved a little bit that's no good when I go to drill those holes I want to make sure they line up on both sides and now I'm going to come down from the top let's get this out of the way here where it works a little bit and I'm going to come down to that line with this like so lock it down and I'm going to make a line where I punch that hole right there to there and one to there and I've got lines that tell me I need to drill there and there so now again remembering that the back is going to be a little bit shaky before I put my big Forstner bit on I'm just going to drill down nice and easy like so and I've got my holes ready see how easily that blows out but I'm going to take my Forstner bit now and start here and do a little bit on both sides so I don't blow out the whole back end of this now I've got my Forstner bits marked and I want you to notice that this one is big enough to accept the sink drain but not big enough for the lip so that lip is going to ride the top of the hole that's important now you're going to remember that I told you I drilled these holes for a reason once again that Forstner bit's got a little tip I'm going to put the tip down in the hole and then start drilling and go a little bit down on both sides because if I don't if I start here and drill all the way through this is going to blow out all this lacquer so let's see what that looks like you see it sheds off pretty easy the way it is I could have put some tape on there that would have helped it a little bit I'm going to work it down a little bit and then come through from the other side. Nice and clean. Let's do the other one. All right, there we go. Easy money. Everything's lined up. Let's get that neck over here. Got a little cleanup to do on the bench, but. Ooh, there we go. Now I got to cut, mount a couple holes for the uh, floating bridge and my pots, and we are good. Okay, a couple of things I want to show you here. Remember, I took my scale ruler that ended up being the 25 and a half mark um, let me slide this down here and lock it down put a mark across the top of the box make sure everything is squared up where my bridge needs to be so right there there's a 25 and a half mark now I've taken the drop downs on my floating bridge this is where the thumb screws sit into uh, and I've measured the space between the drop down is 56 millimeters or 54 millimeters excuse me it might yours might be different so I've marked off 27 I know that 27 is on this side and this side so when I set this over the top as long as I've got those 27 marks lined up on each side can we see there and we see there and everything is lined up in the world and I can see the holes through the floating bridge down through there I'm going to take and set my all there and tap it and do both and then I'll drill my holes okay I've got my all marked there so I'm going to take a small bit drill down through again I'm always going to use a little bit smaller bit than the one I need because I don't want to blow out the back of the box now I'm going to get my screws for the floating bridge 
and drill those holes and drop them in there. So I've drilled my pilot holes. I've jumped up to a little tad bigger bit. One that's just about the same size as the bolt for holds the thumb screw the stud for that so I'm just going to turn this over again I'm coming from the bottom I don't want to blow out this lacquer any more than it is do the same thing from the top and then I will take my trusty Allen wrench and run these in and show you what it looks like now when I'm running these in, I want to run this, uh, there's a point here and an Allen head on this side. So I'm going to run that point in. Now when you're screwing these in, they're tight and they will squeak. Don't th let that alarm you. You don't want this to be real loose because as time goes by, things start to bag out. The next thing you know, your bridge is floating around, but you run that down like so. Give both of them. I should have took these strings off, but oh well. I'll just be stubborn that way. They've already made their sound once, so they don't want to come off the guitar again. But anyway, I'm just running these down into the holes I drilled like so. And then we'll make sure that the bridge lines up. You do really want to be able to see the tip of those things coming through right about there. So this one's got a little bit more to do. Now remember, I'm going to take all these off later because I'm going to put a graphic on here once I've got all my holes drilled. I'm going to have to pull all this off. I'll put the potholes here and then pull them all off, put the graphic on, and then cut everything in with a razor knife. All right, let's take our marking tape off the bridge. If everything went right, oop, there we go. That lined up nice. The holes go in nice. So all I got to do now is drill the holes in for the potentiometers. I'll put one there and one there because remember there is a piezo and a coil on here. And then I got to get back. Uh, the artist wanted the coil in the bridge position that'll give them a lot more room up here than the white owl box did so this will all turn out pretty well all right so we're taking the bolts out of that and give this a little bit more room here now whoever made this coil i'll give you a shout out later on once i hear that everything goes good before i put my name on it the artist gave me this one so i'm gonna put the coil about right there so i can put a mark there and there we're lined up everywhere here and I'm gonna make sure that I'm straight with the world once I get this out of the way I got marks everywhere there so I can go to the side of the box like this and make a mark like that and that and then I'm gonna put the wire over here so we'll line that up once more make sure everything is good there and I'll put a hole there and I'm gonna make a mark about right there because I want this wire to drop down right there and now I'm gonna have to drill these holes for the mounts so remember we were using um, small bolts with uh, nuts with nylon insert so they stay tight forever so let me get these holes drilled and there's the one for the wire good to go all right these pots have a long shaft because the camacho box lids are thick let me retrieve my pencil again the lines that show us where the edge of the thickness of the box come in handy because there's going to be two of these. We want to lay this out like so. Make sure we're off both edges a little bit and draw a circle. Once that circle's there, we estimate where the middle of the hole is. We take our trusty square here, starting to get a little crazy on the box here. 
line everything up like so make sure we know where the center of that hole is and I am going to make a mark there and I know that the center of this pot is going to be here so I will take my square and adjust it like so to there and then once I've got this one here I'm going to point the tabs this way on both so I need to mark right there to make sure that I'm not too close here and then I'm going to set this one over like so and I'll make a rough mark here and I'll take this and come down to right there and that will be the holes for my pot so I'll have one there and one there I've got a pot hole here and one here Get that right on there. Again, I'm drilling pilot holes. I can't uh, remind you enough that as you're going along doing this, you, you get going along pretty fast, and the next thing you know, you're feeling pretty comfortable, and the next thing you know, you've got a mistake going on, and you really don't want that. So, um, hey, have you ever seen one of these, these graduated bits? They come in pretty handy because once you've drilled your pilot hole, on things that feel like these potentiometers you can just flip this around I'll take that up before it falls off these will do the same thing and I'll be looking for them on the floor when I turn this over I've got the holes for my potentiometers I can just put that in the starter hole like this and I gradually work these from the top and bottom like so until my hole is just big enough. These things are awesome. Could you see where I was drilling? Let me look at the camera. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. Look at that. Hey, tip on your potentiometers. Don't forget that little tab is right there. What I typically do is when I find out where this is gonna sit, like so, I will make a little mark and then drill a hole just to the inside of that mark here and here that way that tab will hold your potentiometer down in there when you finally get it mounted and regardless when you get it double nutted on the top it'll never spin so that said we are about ready to put take all this stuff off Put the graphic on and then the next tricky part is going to be to figure out how much have we got to cut out of the box um, top for it to accept the neck hold the screws and open everything up but uh, that top come together pretty nice I think um, and it's certainly making me feel better about the old white owl box giving the ghost up on me rest of it's just cotton pockets I will probably salvage the remember the episode pocket protector I can't just throw those away so look for that episode up there right about now so we're just going to cut the box pockets in and figure out how to adjust these and call it a day all right remember this little depth gauge I'm just going to make sure that this is tied on here, making sure everything is going to flip off. The top of the box is going to be right there. The bottom of the neck pocket is going to be right there. So I just take this, hold it there, slide it up. That is how deep my neck pocket has to be. So we'll put this here. Let me get that out of the way. And my memory serves me right. It's almost right where that line is. So right in the middle where it says Connecticut, that's where it's going to be. So I'm going to put some tape on here and mark this out as far as how deep it's got to be and how wide it's got to be. 
All right, our tape is on there. Oh, I'm going to remind you, we're going to peel this off, this fuzzy coating. This stuff attracts dirt like nothing I've ever seen, but we'll, we'll peel that off and put a graphic on the bottom. We still have to put holes where our sink drain bolts run up through. But anyway, we're getting way out in the weeds here. So now I've got this taped off here and on both ends. Remember, I always want to make sure that I know where these hinges are because they're going to go up towards the body of a right-handed guitar player. Because if you're not paying attention to those and you get them over here and put this on, it's going to come together backwards for you. So I want that like that. Now this comes in handy for me because remember, I have marked the middle here. See, so as long as I've got this lined up like so, I know where the middle is going to be. And then, if you look over here, I'm holding it tight. I've got where my pockets are going to be here. See that? That's as wide as my neck. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to take my depth gauge in two spots. Come down the side of the box. Remember, I can see how wide my neck is there and there. So I'm going to be about right there. I'm going to mark off how deep my neck is going to be in two spots on the box. Making sure I understand where the middle is the whole time. Like so. Now, I've got a small square while everything is falling off. I've got that mark where I know my neck is going to be. So I just line that up right there, like so. Run it down to here. The other one is right there. And I've got those marks there and there. So I just run a square from this side here. Never prepared with my squares. There we go, like so. And then I cut, see that, can you see the light right in there? That is my pocket, I'll do the same thing on the other side. The bottom side by the tailpiece is a little bit easier. Again, my hinges are up here, so I know this is the back. Remember this handy dandy template we made where we know how to line up three strings. I can just put that mark where the center is, right there. Hold it tight, make sure all edges are in place, and run this down. And what do you know? There's my two marks from my depth gauge, and I can just do that. And there is the depth of my pocket right there. While I'm here, remember we're going to have two jacks. You saw the episode two jacks. I think I'm going to use my last I card right now. The Christmas Day episode, which should be coming out right about now, if it's after 3 o'clock on Christmas Day, will be right up there. Uh, but I'm going to tape this off so I don't mar this up. There's going to be a jack there and a jack there. And then we'll figure out how to put our strap button right there. So a little bit more layout to do. All right, there we go. Now we'll just take this big file. And get everything square a little bit. We want to remember that these necks... Uh, bolt to the top of the box so it'll open and close this way so it's always best to take the side away from the hinges down here and make sure that that top part is beveled a little bit because the neck will actually drop down so we'll turn that around do that over here that one needs a little bit of work all over there I like this Big file it takes off a lot in one shot makes things a little bit easier and again we're going to bevel that just a little bit like that there we go all right pull our tape off and see oh yeah that cut came out Real clean, there we go. We'll 
peel off the bottom while we're here. Now pull, pulling the felt off the bottom of the Camacho box is either one of them things that is real easy or it doesn't come off easy and it turns into a 15 minute deal but usually if you can get things started pretty good with a putty knife and then pull at a steep angle it'll come off looks like this one's been sitting around a while all right this one here is giving me my run for my money but it'll be all right it's a little bit sticky graph will graph will fit, fit to it okay and I'll brush a little sandpaper over it and everything will be all right we're going to try and fit this neck into here now. Get these wires out of the way. I've got to have a bigger piece up front where the top is because that scarf joint picks everything up a little bit. Now we're going to pop the top on and see what this is looking like. What do you know? That all lines up pretty good. There we go. Now, you see these sink drains are there. I am going to take my awl here and figure out where a hole goes and I lost my hammer so I'm just gonna tap that like that I'm gonna pop this off and then where that hole is right there I'm just gonna gr drill through on this one and I'll show you a little trick here so you see where I drilled that hole there and I'm gonna flip the box over and the hole is right there. I'm going to need two of them and I want them to be the, the same distance apart. So I'll find the center of this hole and cover it up with this square. It's one of the things where I need several hands. There we go. We're going to mark to there. See that? Now I already know it's this far from here so what I need to know for the other one is how far is it off the edge and I've set this little square like this I'm gonna go over here do the same thing double check and then where those cross each other I am going to drill through very carefully and those will be, will be where my bolts go to put the thumb screws on the sink drains up here. We'll flip these down. And then once we start mounting the neck in, of course we got to get our jacks in. Once we start mounting the neck in, then we'll have to put our bolts that hold the neck on up here once our coil is in place. Our graphic is done, so there we go. So the bolts that go through to attach to the sink drains from the bottom are 10, 32 by 2 Phillips head with a wing nut. And when I put these, uh, when I drill these holes, they're tight enough and sized right where you actually screw these in. I don't want them to be all bagged out. We run them in like that. flip this over like so they're coming up there we just line our sink drain up like that you ever notice the things don't always work out right when you're on the camera but there we go and I just zip those down Like this, and we just test fit everything. There we go. Spiffy box stays on that way. 
Um, now, getting down towards the end, I'm going to use my template. Remember my template, it's got for three strings. Well, I can also use that to line up where the neck is going to go. And as long as I got those center holes lined up, I have a pencil, I can make a mark here and here and here. And I know that my bolts that will go down and bolt uh, the neck to the top of the box will be here and here and away enough from the edge. And I'll put a couple of those in. Again, put the jacks in. We'll throw the neck in quick, quick here and show you what it looks like. All right, we're taking the pocket protectors off the old box here and figuring out where they're going to fit here. Perfect. So I need to take a little bit off there and move this down because the top of the box is going to open up. But again, sound holes, corners, and graphics. And um, you'll see the, this again. So let's close out. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for spending a couple of hours with me on Christmas afternoon. I am really happy with the way this is turning out. I got to get the right graphic. I think uh, maybe a gig poster from somebody from... Uh, Holly Springs would be good. I like the way these pocket protectors are coming together. I like the boxes nice and solid. Um, again, got jacks and things to finish up. And you'll see this one again. So, um, to the artist, hey, Brian, thanks for your patience. You're going to be happy uh, when I finally get this to you. Um, one more time, I want to give a shout out to Margaret Garrett, Margaret Airplane Man. I want to really thank you for mentioning uh, my daughter Tammy who signs all this stuff uh, right up here on the neck. Thanks for giving a shout out in the liner notes and guys if you want to hear good cigar box guitar music you know I made it so I'm kind of uh, uh, I'm kind of proud of it but anyway I think you'll like it too. Again it's Margaret Garrett live at the Charles River Museum of Technology. So I hope you're having a happy holidays and uh, I'm loading up to go to Ridgecrest, California tomorrow to find out about Reuben Lacey. So watch for that episode and I'll see you soon.